ang laban sa illegal na droga ay laban ng bawat isa. Sama-sama nating ipanalo ito. Kapihan sa PIA. We are down to our fourth to the last Kapihan for the year 2017. And of course, this is the last Kapihan for the Department of Health. But then, we have to close it with a bank by turning issues into good news. So good morning. This is Pernisa Kondratista of PIA Cebu along with my co-host, Ms. Annabella Rosas of DYMR Radio Philippines. Welcome sa Kapihan sa PIA. Umatog pa ni Ms. Ferdy, na karong maoy katapusan na pag-host sa Department of Health. And hopefully, sila po yung bukas sa 2018. Mm. Oh, happy na ang Pasko, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Pero, atin pa ni Ferdy, kinahanglan na tapos ang tuig sa maanindot ng mga balita. Mm. Karong, uh, ato ang pag-aiskutan, may kalagutan sa paglawas, tumatili naman na sa Department of Health. Yeah. Healthy po kayo ng itong guest karoon. Punta ka. Nagkabata. Ang ato ang topic nga pag-ihisgutan, may kalagutan sa World AIDS Day, Bogging on Man ang Philippine Antibiotic Awareness Week 2017. These are awareness and observance. Ang kanina po ang topic karoon. So, pwede na lang ang yes. Nagunusara na ito na buktong na guest ng buntaga na mawin mo itong case sa mga topics na ito ang nahisgutan. Huwag lain ang medical officer 3 sa Department of Health Region 7, Dr. Van Felic Baton. Good morning, no? Very good. Good morning, Nato Tagano, and good morning sa ating mga media friends and producers and viewers. So, mayang doon tayo kung man, mayang Pasko na ba? Oo, parang doon lang sa Pagkakaro for our, para sa mga listeners, and tomorrow sa ating mga viewers sa Sky Cable Channel 23, 45 p.m. and ito. Okay, so, ato ang pagtanong si Dr. Fan Tun. Kumusta naman ang AIDS? Kaling tinuig ni ang ato ang pagsa-observance. Hindi pagsa-ulog niya ito. Mag-celebrate. Mag-maya. Karol na ito ang panunod sa update ng DOC. Kung sa mga kalihok ka na ito sa World AIDS Day, kanos amin siya ito. Okay, so actually the World of the AIDS the advocacy for HIV and AIDS, no awareness and to fight its spread. We have a lot of activities every year. Um, every May, we celebrate the Candlelight Memorial in celebration, oh no, in commemoration of those who lost their lives no, to, um, in the fight against HIV, in the fight against the spread of AIDS, and those who died because of AIDS and HIV. And every December 1, we celebrate World AIDS Day. The World AIDS Day, actually, as Saktuk no, it's, it's quite right to not say it's a celebration but it's more of an observance again to, to highlight um, the fight towards HIV and AIDS because um, although makita ka to makasagaran sa ato mga populations or affected by HIV and affected by AIDS are na ito um, uh, means of sexual means or those who uh, society would tell us about CD and sexual behavior but you have to think that these people actually could be somebody's son, they could be someone's father, they could be someone's father, mother, because in Africa where the age of, um, AIDS epidemic is, is when it, it spread like wildfire, a lot of children were qualified by HIV AIDS. So we don't want that to happen in the country. Although the spread of AIDS in the country is quite low in the Asia Pacific, we are now um, projected to have a steady increase of HIV AIDS cases. That's why the Philippines is one of the few countries in the Asia Pacific who has a steady, projected to have a steady increase of HIV cases. 
So World AIDS Day comes to four of those messages. No, uh, we need to have a united effort. It's not just the health community who needs to be involved. It should also be because uh, it takes a child, a village to raise a child. For HIV AIDS, it takes also a village to raise awareness. It takes a village for, uh, for us to call back its friend. Okay, again, if you heard, Kapuna Nato mentions it as the DOH, no, uh, the population who get new infection of HIV are actually getting younger. So it now falls into the homes, into the parents, into the parents' uh, territory to talk to their children regarding HIV AIDS and how to protect yourself against it. So for all AIDS day, AIDS already is not a distant disease, but it's here. It, it already is in the country, it already is in the region, it already is in the city. It already is in the province, it's already is in the municipality. So we just don't know who, who is infected, but it's there. Mm. And the uh, uh, population uh, uh, Actually, for unfortunately, I can data, I will update because of the change at um, Secretary of Health, because now that we have changed in Secretary Rubia, and then we have the voice of Julia, Avalia, and then now we have Secretary Duque, so we have no official report for the July to August uh, cases, but it's still June to, to June 2017. Okay. For, I just talk about the regional data, and I know we must have a feel. So for the regional data, um, since 1984, we started to tally HIV-AIDS um, cases, we now have a total of 4,165 cases. That's since 1984. Yeah? But for the year, from January to June, we have around um, a symptomatic of 447, meaning these are HIV infection, polis symptoms, one of the same. And we have 39 who are symptomatic who already have AIDS or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, meaning that they have symptoms that are not in the immune system. So again, we have 447 who are newly infected, and we have 39 who are now AIDS. For that's from January to June, or middle of the year. For June itself, for the month of June, we have 74 who are newly infected or asymptomatic, or asymptomas, and one the same, and we have 11 who are symptoma uh, symptomatic who have AIDS, no? So that's 11 uh, asymptoms and 74 who are asymptoms. For the breakdown of the provinces, of course, the gap is number one. So, of course, it always follows the, um, the, those with the biggest population, and urban centers actually are at the higher risk of getting much more HIV infection because mas sayo mga mga tao, mas sayo mga kita ng mga buhay ng mga lugar para makabuhas ng mga behavior that will put them at risk. So for Cebu province, we have for June itself, kapit ko ang 72 new infections. 72 out of the 74. Yes, 72 out of the 74. And then for the Symptomatic, all the 11 symptomatic cases were reported in Cebu province, okay? So, after in total, let's just go now to the 1984 to present. Again, majority are still in Cebu province with 3,665 uh, 3, were infected with HIV. So, 3,665 out of 3,908 were um, symptomatic. For the HIV AIDS or those who already have symptoms, that's 219 in Cebu province. That's 219 over 257 for the entire region. So if you can see the figure, kita natin yun na Cebu actually, Cebu province and the Thai cities, Cebu, Mandawe, Lapu, Alisa and other higher organized centers actually posted added majority of our new cases. Again, maybe because um, Masayun, mas open ang atong mga tao na sa urban centers as compared to other areas. Pwede sa na tumut kay this Cebu City, um, Cebu, um, the Tri Cities, and even Region 7 is one gateway to Mindanao and gateway towards the Visayas for our our one. So that also is one of the reasons that I have mga visit, visitors here in Cebu City and the Tri Cities. So that's also one of the reasons nga they have the cases. Now if we go down to 
issue, no? Issue, tama ka sa issue kung kisa ang pinakakaihan. Because we're always seeing that they are getting younger, no? So actually, HIV AIDS, sila FIDA waves, natin mga waves, no? Ang first wave is expected to be in our female, in our sex worker industry. So lagi na kung nama ito because they are, yung mga nilang business, every day they are at risk. So the first wave occurred around 1990s, up to the late part of 1990s, early part of 2000. We had a lot of female sex workers. So we have a lot of people sa akin cases. It was very minimal. Minimal lang yun siya. And very effective ang atong condom for the female sex workers. That was very good. The comment as WHO because controlled epidemic for the first wave. However, for the second wave, it's expected for our special population that's males, well, sex with males, our transgender women, and our people who inject drugs. These are now um, not the female sex workers who do not engage in um, transactional sex, but the behavior, the risky behavior is still very present. That's why they are the second wave. Mm -hmm. So the second wave, we're experiencing now the second wave of our HIV AIDS epidemic. So a lot of them are males of sex with males, transgender women, and our people who inject drugs. So the PDA group of people who inject drugs actually are at risk because they usually share with those mga kulipulis na gago, mga kipig, or that's their way of in their community, no? So, in Cebu, we actually have everyone, no? We are the only region with a very strong TV community na may nagkalas ng epidemic. Because in, if you look at the case mode by transmission, since 1984, transmission due to sharing of needles, accounted for 1,852. So that's 1,852 of the total na 4,165. So again, ang muna ito ang mga nakuha due to sharing of needles. For the male-to-male sex, unprotected sex, it's now at 1,048. 1,048 over the 4,165. So if you look at the national um, national figures, a majority of the transmission cases are male to male sex or unprotected sex. No? But in Cebu, it's different. Second, mm -hmm. the uh, majority yeah, is no, people who inject drugs by sharing infected needles. Mm -hmm. It's a very prominent in uh, the community here in Cebu City, Mandawi, mm -hmm. Lapu Lapu, and and other high urbanized centers in Cebu. So for the age group, again, they're getting younger because the the, the regional trend follows the national trend. The majority of our cases actually fall between the age group of 25 and 34 years old. So again, these are our young professionals, these are our new um, new blood in the industry, no? Highly productive period or highly productive age group. So in Cebu, they account for 1,878 of the total 4,160. So if you look at that, 870. 1870. So that's over 4160. So that's close to 2000. So almost almost half of the population of the region are in the age group and infected. Next to that is your 15 to 24 years old. That's your 15 to 24 accounting for 1220. So if you look at that, the purity of HAV is the national event period. You could get it 10 years ago, you get it 5 years ago. So it doesn't mean that when you get tested now and you tested positive, it's, it does not mean that you got it a year ago. It could be 10 years ago. So if you look at that mindset, you can actually have a hypothesis that the 25 to 30 person actually got infected at a younger age, but they just got tested at a later age. Because number one, in our reproductive AI, in our RAA 504, that's our Philippine AIDS law, it is stated there that if you're 18, 18 years old below, or in the, you're not yet in the age of majority, you still have to have parental consent to get a set. Mm -hmm. no? So that's actually a barrier for us in the program because when we, when we look at the data of what is the age group that Filipino adolescent engage in sexual act or sexual debut, it's actually 16 years old. Uh, no? Average. Average, yes. 16, 16 years old with the average. That's both for male and female. So if you look at that, 
They already are engaging in behaviors, but they do get a scent. Even at 18, 19 years old, wala pa na because they still live with their parents. No? So, muna nga, they're not contesting. It increases at 24 or 24 years old because at this age group, majority of them are stronger in their household. They are now living in higher urban centers, in Cebu City, working on their own, being more independent. So, that's why it's easier for them to access testing. However, if you're younger, so that pa ka, pwede na, maikong pa ka mag-testing na pwede ng parents. So, that's something to think about. That the, we might be getting in, but uh, we might be diagnosing them at an age group as compared to before. But actually, in reality, they could have been infected at a younger age group. Because again, based on our national survey, the average age for adolescents to engage in sexual act is at 16 years old. So, I think that's the data. That's the data. Mother to infant transmission. Actually, we cannot, uh, we only have. We can we can take of it by getting the younger ratio. If you have a younger ratio na wala pa exposure to sexual activities, then we can say it's mother to child transmission. Since 1984, we already accounted for seven younger than 15 years old or wala pa sexual exposure. So we can say that that actually is a figure that has been infected from mother to child transmission. That's uh, with seven. Um, Seven newborns or seven, seven children that got infected from their infected mothers. Okay. So, kung ito ako klaro mo no, nga, ang kinik maong na data, June 2017, tungod kay ang uh, bagong nga mga data, di pa na siya official na marilis until nga masirmahan sa Secretary of Department of Health. So, sa sanilungan nga nung uh, wa sa siya ma-update, no? wa, wa pa ma-update ang mga home data tungkol sa pag-ilis-ilis sa mga secretary. It's early enough for ang June. Okay na rin na data kaysa uban ng mga data na ito pa sa 19... Kapungko ka. So, June is already a you know, reference for news. Hmm. Actually, the June data actually give you already a trend. Okay. 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 And the trend is it's not getting... It's rising. Oh, it's rising each other. It's, 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 oh. it's, it's a steady increase of cases. So when we say it's rising, are we all, can we also conclude that uh, our government efforts are somewhat lacking? Okay. We, the department of that actually do admit that we were kind of slow in our response to the, during the second wave. It wasn't as good as the first wave. Well, the majority of the actors in the first wave, majority of them were actually privately initiated. Yes. Again, because the population is not famous sex workers, there are hidden population. So it's easier for non government organizations to penetrate actually this person. Because again, legal man, the Philippines um, um, prostitution, right? it's not legalized. So it's easier for the NGOs to get there. However, for the second wave, we were not that fast in responding. That's why. For now, if we are seeing the figures actually in public health setting, you want to get a lot of those who are infected. You want to get them. Why do you want to get them? Because you want them to get the treatment. Because in HIV, we have this principle of treatment as prevention. Because we well, like cure in HIV, however, we have medicines to control the viral load. We have the virus. Because viral load, is directly proportional to the acid viral load, mas dali ka maka-transmit, mas dali ka maka-takot sa mga tao. So once you're in treatment, the viral load actually goes down and eventually becomes undetectable. Hindi, wala ha. Undetectable na siya sa test, meaning it's the yeah, less than the minimum ng distance sa testing kit. So it's undetectable but it's there. Once you're undetectable, the chances of you passing on the virus through unprotected sex becomes very low. That's why we have the concept of treatment as prevention. That's why you want to get as much as, if you can get 100% of those expected, we have actually projected numbers. I, don't, I, I just apologize, I, I was asking for the estimated numbers, but wala na sense sa Manila last night. But we have projected numbers, and for Cebu, and for the region actually, we haven't reached the 90% target of the estimated number. You know, we're barely around 60 to 80%. Mm -hmm. So actually these figures that increasing the kind of like absolute nanny. It's it's just but on the tip of the iceberg because you have still a lot to catch up on because every year you have an estimate it increases 
but our number of new cases in the day so that the test kits are very slow in increasing. So we have a lot to catch up on. So the, the estimates are increasing, the cases are trying to catch up. So we're now at 60 to 80 percent estimated um, people living with HIV. So it's getting bigger, it's getting higher among the figures because people are now accessing testing more. Aware ng mga tao sa mga test. Like before, kung hindi po pa sila kung asa paduro, na ba bayad, or they could be maikot, mga 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 So it could be two things. It could be that um, actually this is new infections, and it could also mean that a lot of the old cases actually are now accessing accessing testing. So that actually just shows that it's actually increasing now. Is the government effort not enough? Actually, in all HIV AIDS program, wherever you go in whatever country, nagiting mga lapses. Like for example, if you go towards the main slot sexual meals, our only our one of our key strategy points is on condom yes. utilization. Because that's our only use because you you got it from a protected sex, so condoms. However, condom is very adverse to those who are sexually active. Kaya mo naman sa liso, isa ko na yung out o kung napay ko sa sos. Yes, it's a comfort issue rather than of safety. So that's one of the reasons nga. We need to have, as some advocates would say, na pondo has been pinanan na. Ever since HIV AIDS came to our mind, pondo may patunay na ito ang strategy. So right now, we're having other strategies aside from pondo. Although it's still pilot, we have the concept of PrEP. It's pre-exposure to finances. It's just like taking medicine for HIV, even if you don't have HIV. You know, if if my ego has a infect, if ever my contact or someone is infected, you now have the medicine in you to at least prevent it from spreading and become a pandemic. So pre-exposure for vaccines. It's, vaccine, it's actually a mess. Whatever the mess nga kung gihatag sa ato mga people living with HIV for one treatment, it's still the same thing you're getting. So we're not getting the old man infection because you're actually getting the meds. It's not a new med, we shall have a meds. It's the same meds or the same medicine that are given to our people who are diagnosed with HIV. Mm. You just have, you just are taking it even if you are still HIV negative or non-negative. So more or less vitamins. More or less vitamins. Yeah, more or less. So what I'm saying, in fact, we know that we can uh, Actually, that's one of the issues we have with PrEP. Mm -hmm. A lot of advocates or a lot of um, uh, oppositors of our own PrEP mm -hmm. works around that. But you will be getting the same side effect. You will have to take it every day. You still have to subject yourself to testing because you want to see it possible. You see it again, you know, and then so you still have to subject to regular testing to see if you're still actually negative and then you have to endure the side effect. And the side effect can be very mild, can just be an A, it could be very severe. Nga pwede siya o oban mo rikang kung nga akakuri, malawas, or sometimes and you bomb are actually still in line of skin reaction. So the side effect is there. Pwede siya mawala kung yung kaya wala kayo siya. It's still there. That's one of the issues, and again, timing. You have to take it every day, and then, although some would say na mawala ang purpose of condoms, because again, we're protected. You still have to wear condoms because it's only protected of HIV and not other STIs. So you still have to wear Boy Scout or Girl Scout. Kaya sa ito na yung mga encounter ba? Ini ko na yung, you are ready. More or less, it's also another issue. It's like na lang encouraging promiscuity. Oh, in a way. Actually, the, the issue of encouraging of promiscuity that's always been thrown towards Sondo advocacy, um, you can talk about it the two things, no? Either, or if our baseline is that our age group actually are not engaged in sexual act, mm -hmm. then you can say, you're telling them to do it, no? Mm -hmm. But our data is to say that whether we have a common program or we have a common program, children are still engaging in sex. Yes. So, Wala kay, wala tayong makita na when we introduce condoms, mas nakabata ang to ang people or the the adolescent or the youngest. Either with it or without it, they will engage in sex. We just want the Department of Health, of course, our 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 expertise is on morality. Our expertise is on prevention. 
diseases na tala public health impact, no? Protektahan ang tala ng tao ang walang may sakit, kung matumalay sakit, matagaan sa mga servisyo na pwede yung makataas ng mga kinabuhi. That's our goal. Now, the issue of morality, I think that's no longer our worry. So, again, I said, no, in my introduction, no, that it takes a village to raise a child, and it will take a village to combat HIV. So, we leave it to those who are experts on morality to at least inject the concept of morality towards this age group. Mm -hmm. Now, yun sila nga, um, di naman po doon mga tungkol ng advocacy, we have actually the ABCD of HIV prevention and SCI, our A is always abstinence. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to, if you, if, you, if, you want to, if you want to get protected from sexually transmitted infection, including HIV, then don't engage in sex. Again, of course, it's 100% because mm -hmm. when it came to us, it's not about that. Wow. So, It's the most effective, but again, it's the most difficult to do because in reality, we're all we're all slaves of our hormones, all slaves of our urges. So it has to do with control, and control and self-discipline cannot happen overnight. No one can tell you to do that. So it must start from the families. You just have to do it in your family. That will be sweet and cool. We always tell that. No, it's not promiscuous. Be faithful and be mutually faithful. Both of you. Yes. It should be only me and you and no one else. No, I'm getting on this. So, we're encouraging to spirit to encourage actually faithfulness. No. Well, I'm getting my Mars stuff. Faithful in Mars. Be faithful. And then, that's where if the A and the B fails, meaning we'll have to start with those or whatever issues that could happen, then come the thing say, let's see, let's come down. It's the last C. A, B, C is the third option path. It's not the first, no? The A and B, self-control, conscience, and your values when you were raised as a child or your adulthood, but the C is the last. That means it. If you can't control, then you have another way to protect yourself. And that's correct and consistent on the news. So, na kondom lang, but you added two more Cs. Correct and consistent. Why? Because even if you use kondom and you use it sa iyo, yung pagkamit, mag-easy ang kondom. Di na tuwag kayo, nako ang kondom, nako ka mo na ang kondom, at sa iyo, ang hindi mag-ihan, ang kondom, okay? So, masipag-tong dyan sa kaya ka. So, that's easy, easy, not by B. B, 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 and then it, just, it should be consistent. Meaning, if you, if, you are, if you are not committed, meaning if you are single, you should do it. You should use it to all your contact. Because again, HIV is symptomatic. What is it? Thomas. DIY for next door. What? DIY. What's that? Do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, whatever D is, what's that? Do it yourself. Do not share with those for a few weeks. And for the younger age group, so the younger age group is do not abuse drugs and do not abuse alcohol. Why? You know, after one day in jail. Because you might be doing some things that is not of your personality when you're intoxicated. Yes. No? Sabi na sa akin ng party goers, pwede nakilipang buhat, nakilipang buhat, nakilipang buhat, nakilipang buhat, nakilipang buhat. Okay. So nagkalami ang mga gilang na tuwang gihisgutan, pero before na ito ka na maghisgut pa taong dagang mga lami, ano sa tasalain na Actually, we have um, we have a lot of drugs because it's always a combination. For ARV treatment, you have two NRTI tests, na uh, NRTI tests, nuclear uh, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, and then one NRTI uh, non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. So it also is a combination. Three na ato niya kaya kambal. I don't want to bore with the details. If the doctors have a bit to do that, but for the prep, ang ato ang digamit is your um, one NRTI lang, that's, I think it's Tinofobia or Lamiudin. I'm not so sure with the med, but it's only one. So if you're on treatment, you need to have three. But if you're on uh, prevention, you only have one. And these are available where? Um, for the treatment, for the treatment, it's actually available in our treatment house. In Soto, in Cebu City Social Religion Clinic. We actually have other treatment hubs na mga hindi mo maaksesan nila, but um, they can go for information and testing in the Science Community Medical Center. <laughs> Kita di sini di Hospital Universiti Chan Sanitarium. Ah, dia ni saya bersama-sama kau anak. Dia ni saya. Jadi, kita tu kita sendiri. Okay. 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 Jadi, kita tu
So actually, this is a WHO mandated team for all health ministries and health departments to celebrate and to identify the Pakai dulu masuk orang lagi, lagu orang kaya, tu sini pun ada more sah kedis kita tu kan sini. And it's so sad because kalau tu sini is always the first line for a lot of diseases, ah infections that you know, yeah, children, more than adults. So that's one of the reasons yang kita ingat tu mah. We have a limited number of antibiotics, and our microorganisms, even our viruses, actually can. Shortcut, circumvent the antibiotics. No, so this is celebrated every for this year. It's celebrated on the 13th to 19th of November. No, no, man, na. So, but again, we just have to highlight it. Yeah, it's that we have actually just to bring to awareness the antibiotics. No, ano man. Karena ini semua purpose antibiotic actually is antibiotic, so it's to kill those living that are causing infection. So it actually includes not just your antibiotic, but also your antiretrovirals that you have right now. Because the question there is, if you're not using your antibiotic well, you can actually get resistance. And if you're resistance, then you're not going to accept it. You're not going to get antibiotic. So you go into a higher antibiotic. If you don't have a polar, then you go to a much more higher antibiotic. And every time it increases in its class of antibiotic, it also entails it's much more expensive. And it also would entail much more than the side effects. So I just wanted to highlight in relationship to antibiotic awareness week and resistance to STIs. If you heard the news around, I think it's around July or August, kung nakita ang the resistant gonorrhea strain to any antibiotic, wala na siya antibiotic. So even if you're taking the normal antibiotic for gonorrhea, you still would have, you still would have the the gonorrhea or the sexual transmitted infection, or the focal sexual transmitted infection. Muna siya ang tulo sa mokebao, so tulo ang siya. So for males, it's very painful. For females, not so painful, but it's just messy because time na discharges. So imagine, you have gonorrhea as a man, it will be very painful every time you urinate, and no man, no antibiotic can help you because it's already resistant. No? Mana sih sirat? Nice, sirat or tulok, tulok. Kaya mana sih kita pin, no? So mana sih yang kami highlight? Antibiotics are there to help us, but if you're not using it right, if you're not using it under a prescription, meaning, um, apa nama antibiotik should be taken on a particular time, and it should be taken every time. Why? Because once you have the medicine in you, it stays in there for a lot, for a specific amount of time. Like if like if I take roxacillin, roxacillin, that's a penicillin second generation, or the slow amoxicillin, amoxicillin, no? That's the most common. You have to take it because it stays in the body for six hours. So you have to take it in 24 hours, that's a capilla siya yung nun. Diba? So you have to take it every six hours or four times a day because it stays in you for six hours. So if you're not taking it at the right time, na yung time ng gusto sa antibiotic level na pwede mo Bilaga sa dinuha, may organisms. If mabuhi ito siya, then it can become resistant. So what I use are mga antibiotic. So that's the danger. A lot of people right now are thinking na if I have cough right now, I'm giving amcicillin. If I have cough again next month, it will still be amcicillin. That's not follow because as physicians, as doctors, you have to think of exposed to manisha sa antibiotic. Maybe I need to risk for antibiotic. So, they might have the same symptoms, but it doesn't mean that they have the same treatment. So, antibiotic awareness week just brings that into core. Antibiotic is prescribed because only doctors study. Ako mismo galing na I prescribe antibiotic to my mother, to my father, and to my brothers and sisters. I still have to check books to see if I'm doing it right. Because you can actually play with it, like some every six hours. You can make it shorter if you want to have a lot, but that's the prescribed. Or we can make it longer if you think that we can handle the KR gravity infection. So again, highlighting the need of doctors to actually tailor fit. Dili ikaw kaya doctor, doctor. Dili ikaw kaya doctor ha. Dika pa doctor. So again, doctors will be able to prescribe. So Philippine Antibiotic Awareness Week to bring you to highlight the possibility of drug resistance. Kana lang yun. Ang tema na sa so far, wala na. We don't. We are trying to see if the strain already is in the country. And so far, wala pa tayo na release official data if the strain has reached the country. But a lot of countries have already been reporting on the 
But it could be managed, but not the usual antibiotic na. Again, coming into, coming into highway na sa na to ang um, messaging na if you're feeling, if you're not feeling right, especially for this kind of diseases na uh, sexually transmitted na sensitive siya na issue, ayaw ang pag-agawang tayo do, guy. Go to the nearest doctor, go to the nearest facility, and have yourself check. Ayaw ko. Ayaw ko. Ayaw ko. Ayaw ko. Ayaw ko. Ayaw ko. We're trying to as uh, for me the program, for us as a program in charge for our sexual assisted infection, including hepatitis B and C and HIV AIDS. We're trying to make our primary care doctors able to detect and prescribe medicines for STIs. And if they're not capable, we're trying to have at least one center in the other area for the referral. As of now, the still plan, which we will be implementing it next year to see if it's very effective. But that's the direction of the program, to make our primary care physicians much more able to diagnose and take care of these people who are reviewing the CIs. Yes, also in education, usually we have become about well, medical professionals and medical professionals. Okay, so, we have the theme of Kuiga. Antibiotics handle with care. Yes, handle with care is Because again, highlighting, if you don't use it right, you might have resistance. resistance. Yeah. The higher you go, the higher the price. The, 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 the much more side effects in the end. So, antibiotic is anti, it kills the... The living. Bio. Bio is living thing, my okay. Antibiotic is just living the living, uh, the microorganisms that are causing infection. Okay, so one, claro, kayo nun, yan. Nagka na tayo pa, uh, inisgutan po ang mga mga tuwang uras. So maybe, ato na ihatag, no, ang uh, panahon sa itong mga kaubanan sa media sa pagpamutanan ni Dr. Baton, ang inisgutan, uh, it's ID, AIDS, o ang uh, kinik antibiotic. So si Mars, ang unang mautan na, pagyuto sa microphone, Mars. My own dog, uh, Mars of Rappler. For purposes of comparison, though, uh, unsa ato ang data, or unsa ang rate sa increase sa ato ang cases from June 2016 to June 2017, which is the latest uh, data number. Um, unfortunately, I don't have here the regional data for last year. Um, I'm trying to pull up the national data for national lang ang tanawang kaya sa ating data for per year na increase for the month, no? So let's go to the national data. Now for last year, na lang, let's go to the national data. For last year of June, we had 841 for June. AIDS, HIV AIDS. Oh, 841 for June. Last year. That's HIV AIDS. HIV AIDS. For 2017, that's already national data is 1013. No? 1013. So 841 versus 1013. So we can see that it's actually around um, more than 15% increase for the, from the previous year of June, same time period. If you heard the news, Kapun May, na alarm na highlight sa the Philippines because it actually was the month that we crossed the threshold of a thousand per month. Oh. Yes, the May month was a very significant milestone for the HIV program because it was the month that we reached the 1,000 reporting. Because if we reach that time, it's expected na that will be the normal norm. That will be the normal na ato mga mga reporting. It won't be less than 1,000. So from May of this year, we have crossed the threshold. For the national data, we had reached 1,098. 1,098. From April of the same week of this year, before a month before that, we only had 629. 629. 629. Oh, for April. No, April this year. Then on May, it became 1,098. And then for June, it did became 1,013. So it's expected that around the July and the August reporting, it will still be a thousand, not more, not less than a thousand, because the trend right now we're seeing is that 
every month has been the, was the highest since the previous month. There might be some variation, but may lang, not that very significant to say that it's less. But there may lang variation, but the overall trend is it always, every month, is higher than the previous months. Oh, mm -hmm. Sir, by uh, the region, sir, the mention about Cebu province, can you also provide us with uh, data on Bohol, City Hall, oh, and yeah. uh, Negros? Okay. Um, I just highlighted Cebu because some of the very significant numbers. Now, let's go to Bohol. It had a total of, let's go down to the total of 784. No? figures. For the HIV AIDS infection, it had 153. 153. In Bohol. Ilan total 600? No, 153 for Bohol plus 23 nga as asymptomatic or AIDS. No? So, katong 153 is your asymptomatic or infected na sila. For the month of June, Bohol reported only two new cases and no uh, AIDS or symptomatic cases. That's for the month of June. For this year, that's January to June, Bohol already reported 30 new infections, and then two of them are AIDS uh, symptomatic. Sixty four, six since 1984, and so far, we have to report new cases for, uh, for this year. So, Sikki Horsey. And then, Negros, total 84 infection, 15 and AIDS. For June, we have a infection. For January to June, they have 13 infection and two AIDS. January to June. 13 infection, that's asymptomatic, and two um, AIDS. So again, you look at the difference in number two, which is Bohol, with 153 compared to Cebu with 3,665. Can you want to from 1984 yes. to June? Yes, to June 2017. So it, it, it's possible, Doc, that hindi mga taga Bohol, taga Negros, na mali ni Cebu, mga nang dahas kayo kisya sa ito. Or, hindi mo mali ni mga mayan sa City Horror ngayon. By the way, Doc, uh, on the basis na to sa gathering sa data, uh, health centers, hospitals, Actually, have the reporting form where the, the, those who are tested would have to put in their permanent address. And that's where we place the infections. So, when you permanent address, that will be the area that they will be reported. So, if you place in, even if you got tested in Manila, but your permanent address is Cebu City, the, if you got infected or you got confirmed to be HIV positive, then it will be reported in Cebu City and not in Manila where you got tested. So, actually, that would give us a uh, an idea of if ever these people come back to their areas, to masa to pangitaon. However, that could be true in other regions, but in Cebu, it's actually it's, it's it's actually good news for us in the program because in Cebu, a lot of our cases are actually diagnosed also in Cebu. And I'm going to data where they got diagnosed and where there's a permanent address. In Cebu, at least more than now, 90% of those who are diagnosed are actually also living in Cebu. So, wala tayong problema na masayo ang reporting. So, even if you are from Bohol, yung problema na nasin mo is Bohol, and you are tested in Cebu, it will be recorded in Bohol. Okay. Last question na lang yun, ma'am. Uh, Naakay data for this year sa number of HIV, AIDS, uh, death-related cases? Um, uh, no, we have sought lang for our mortality rate. It's very underreported. No? But it's very underreported for, um, for our mortality. The reason for that is that, number one, um, they don't tell, wala kay mawa ang mga tagtungot kung nabi HIV or what. Number two is, they could be undiagnosed, wala kang diagnosed HIV positive sila. Or number three is that, lagi ang diagnosis. Because for us to record it as an HIV, the, 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 the AIDS diagnosis or the HIV confirmed diagnosis should also be found in the diagnosis. However, a lot of them would say na, doon pwede ka hindi ang diagnosis or it's pneumonia or it's immunocompromised, it won't be recorded as an HIV then. So for the region, we actually have deaths, no? Since 1984, imagine, without treatment, you'll die within 10 years. For the region, we, already, we only have 112 deaths since 1984. 
Meaning, it's that. very, very low. It's very, very low for us to, to say that this actually is a failure because we so still have a lot. <laughs> we know that they're still alive or unreported. What happens actually is mm. a lot of them are not reported in our data. Yes. Huh. So why data sa dimension sa mga kono? Kung doon na ba yung nakatali? Moko siya. 112. Since 1984. Okay. Uh, they can die with different causes. Yes. Uh -huh. Actually, we always say that uh, HIV is a virus. The process seems to happen at least decrease in the immune system because the target of the virus is to decrease your immune system, no? the CD4. So if you don't have an immune system, of course, it's easier for you to get a lot of infection that a normal individual wouldn't get. Okay? For example, TB of the lungs, common. However, if you are immunocompromised, the TB of the lungs can become TB of the bones, can become TB of the stomach, TB of the brain. Because the immune system is not competent. It's a it's, uh, malignancy that is not common to healthy individuals, but it's easier for uh, a person without uh, an immune system to get. So actually, they don't die of the virus, but they die of the complications. Because you don't have an immune system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Next. it's a rule. 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 It's but if you have an, if you don't have an immune system, you actually die as the owner of the home because of the lack of immune system. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, certificate, yes. you can do it as a certificate. Actually, you can word it as immunocompromised. Like pneumonia and immunocompromised host, meaning you don't have an immune system, you die of pneumonia. However, a lot of these things can have you immunocompromised. But you can have steroid stamp because you have um, because you are an arabica, like severe allergies or whatever, you can have you can have this compromise because you have to slant, but it's also the immune system for the detection. So the immune compromise itself state is not exclusive for each and every things. So we're not gonna have some record after each and every because it's not that specific. Yes. Dog VP. VP. Okay. Vice President, <laughs> Dr. Uh, Van Fittip. What did you say you don't want us, no? Oh, so, no. Uh, after sa koan. Unlimited na. Unlimited na. Unlimited na. Unlimited na. Unlimited na. Oh, okay. So, siguro, pangayuan na lang na ito o uh, parting statement si Dr. Uh, Bacon. So, doon na ba kayo kanawagan sa publiko ko, kabangin sa antibiotic o sa HIV. Doc. Ano ka po ang World AIDS Day, no? Of the... The Department of Health Regional Office is in partnership with Cebu Plus to celebrate or commemorate the World Aids Day celebration. And so we have two um, three lines of activities tomorrow, that, um, tomorrow for our listeners and today for our viewers on November 13th, the National Day, we will have a concert that Steve us live in Cebu together with Jaya, uh, together with Casey Zambian, Kyla, um, and Jenny Kito with special guest Jaya and Eric Santos to be held at IUC Pavilion at 7 p.m. We have a concert for that. For the benefit, I'm not going to raise the funds to be for the benefit of our people living with the HIV. Now, on December 1, that is actually our World Aids Day celebration. Cebu Plus will be conducting a um, a short program at Ayala, Ayala Center Cebu. It will be uh, around the new wing of Ayala, Cebu. Um, care bears that will be auctioned off. It's, it's dressed up by our famous designers in Cebu. Kaya may mga bears, kaya tagagawag sa itong mga designers, kaya ito yung auction off. Ang ating funds na will be given to us an uh, educational fund for our children with HIV. And then, on December 2, we have a World Aids Day run. We encourage everyone to join. It will be participated by Tony La Busca of La Lula Lung Sangre. So we hope everyone to join. It's our run, and then natin yung activities and advocacies. For all our activities, na yung type free testing. If you want to get tested, you can go to these activities and have yourself checked. So it's a series of activities for those in Bohol who also have a World Aids Day run on December 3. No? Same time, 4.30 p.m. And it will again be participated by Tony Ramuska. For the details, it's all in social media. You can, you can now look at it. World Aids Day run on December 3, Cebu. Diva Slide in Cebu. So check on it. The prices for tickets are there and ready to get them. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay.
again, we don't want to have resistant population to antibiotic. So, kagawa na itong mga takalagin ng sisili, kalihog po, minus minus at nato, don't buy it if you don't need it, don't drink it if you don't need it. So, always ask the doctor if you need it because it could be that viral, hindi kayo mga antibiotic, you just have to wait it out. So, again, have yourself checked, go to your facility, maybe you don't need antibiotic in the first place. Nagtagang salamat sa Department of Health. Kung sa ato ang mga kaupan sa media, matambong na po kami na. Muna ang tubong sa PLA. Ang paghatag ninyo ang mga informasyon ang nakabuhat ka mo ang pagkakos ng mga desisyon. Kini si Marisa Pangatista sa PIC Jumai. Kini sa Mr. Rosa sa BYM Mga Radio Pilipinas. Kapasalamat ka ninyong kanan. O mga ginaot ni nga dahil ninyo na pupo ang mga kasayuran may kalabutan sa panglawas. Mayong adlaw ka na itong kanan.